Hi chemistry students! Today we're going to be watching a video together about the Aufbau principle. The learning objective is to use the Aufbau principle to predict ground state electron configurations for atoms and ions. The ground state is considered the lowest energy state of an atom and it is true that atoms will tend to be in their ground state as their most stable form. So electrons will occupy the lowest energy orbital available to them unless they are caused to be excited by some event such as the absorption of a photon or a collision with another atom. So an atom is most stable again when its electrons are at its lowest possible energy level. And from what you learned in previous videos on the quantum mechanical model, you'll know that the lowest energy level available to an electron is when its principal number, n, is equal to 1, and its principal shell, l, is equal to 0. So this is the state in which the electrons occupy a space that is spherical in nature surrounding the uh, nucleus of the atom and quite close in. So if we have an atom that has several electrons, those electrons are all going to be at, at the lowest possible state available to them. However, this doesn't mean that all of the electrons will fit within the 1s orbital. Indeed, only two electrons can fit within any one quantum orbital. So if an, if an atom has more than two electrons, those first two electrons will reside within the 1s orbital but any additional electrons will go into the next higher energy state. So higher energy means we're increasing the principal number, and so the next electrons will fit within the 2s orbital, where n has a value of 2 and l has a value of 0. The 2p orbitals are slightly higher in energy, with an n value of 2 and an l value of 1. Notice that within the 2p energy level, there are three spaces, each representing a different value of the angular momentum, m sub l. It's important to note that the energy level of these three orbitals within the 2p series are all identical. Whereas we know that it, the 2s orbital is higher energy than the 1s orbital, the 2p orbitals are higher in energy than the 2s orbitals, but within 2p, each of the uh, directions for that dumbbell shape that we associate with the p orbitals are equal in energy. So we call these three orbitals degenerate orbitals. The image that we're looking at now is a schematic showing the relative energy values of the different orbitals. And if we focus in on the left-hand side of this diagram, we can see just the s orbitals, where l is equal to zero. And as you can see, as we increase our principal quantum number, we get an increase in energy with the associated s orbitals. Looking a little over to the right, you can see the relationship between the p orbitals and the s orbitals. So as I mentioned, the, in the last slide, the p orbitals, the 2p orbitals, are slightly higher in energy than the 2s orbitals. However, they are lower in energy than the 3s orbital. And this trend continues, 3p greater than 3s but lower than 4s, 4p greater than 4s but lower than 5s, and all the way up. Something becomes surprising, however, when we get to the d and f orbitals, where l is equal to 2 and 3, respectively. If we focus in on the 3d orbital, you'll notice that when we compare it to the other orbitals within the principal number 3, it has higher energy than 3p, which has higher energy than 3s. However, the 3d orbital has higher energy than the quantum number 4, 0, so the 4s orbital, would prefer to fill the 4s orbitals before adding to the 3d orbital. Similarly, 
looking at the 4f orbital, you'll see that it is higher in energy than the both the 5p and the 5s orbitals. So electrons will be added preferentially into even the 6s orbital before they would be added to the 4f orbital. Basically, the rule of thumb is if you were to write out all of the s orbitals in a column and then begin writing out the p orbitals in a column next to it but starting one down and then the three orbitals in the column next to that but one lower in position and then the f orbitals lower still, you can figure out which electron orbitals have the lowest energy by going through your diagram on an angle. So looking at this Aufbau principle, this is allowing us to understand which orbitals have the lowest energy. The 1s orbital is the first that we encounter, and then if we follow this arrow, the next highest energy level is the 2s orbital. Follow our arrow slashing through, the next higher energy is 2p. So, so far it's fairly intuitive going up to 3s, and then higher than 3s is 3p, higher than 3p is 4s, and now we get the surprise of 3d. If you remember from the previous slide that the 3d orbital, even though its principal quantum number is 3, is actually higher energy than the 4s orbital. After the 3d orbital comes 4p, and finally 5s. Bringing our zigzag along, we see after 5s comes 4d, then 5p, then 6s. And finally, following along further, now we see the 4f being filled before the 5d, before the 6p, before the 7s, and so forth. So as we get down the periodic table, we know that each element has one more proton than its neighbor. And with one more proton comes one more electron. So when we get to the larger types of elements, we'll see that their atoms have electrons occupying these higher energy orbitals. You can gain practice with using the Aufbau principle by answering these problems. Which orbital in each uh, pair would be associated with higher energy? 5p or 4s? 3D or 3S. Have fun with this and I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to go over the Pauli exclusion principle and Hund's rule.